Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to give a basic tutorial of how to use the Web Season Controller. So on the screen is the main Web Season menu, and you can see we have some temperature and humidity process variables with the actual value in the large numbers and the set point in the smaller value. Over here, we have status, mode, messages, report, settings, and maintenance. And the first thing we'll want to learn how to do is operate the chamber in manual mode. So first, we're going to click mode. And you can see we're already in manual mode. So here, let's say we want to run at 85 Celsius and 85% relative humidity. And we want to run for five hours. Those were all changed just by clicking the variable and changing the number and the units accordingly. From there we just hit the start button and you have to verify that the temperature limit was set. This is a, a demo controller, it's not hooked up to a real chamber, so I'm going to click OK. And you can see the values changed almost instantly because this is a demo controller and we see the play button, manual mode, how much time we have left, the start and the end time, and who started the program. So it's already almost there, and this will continue to run until the timer runs out. So we could wait for that, but to continue on, we just want to stop this in manual mode. So we'll come down here, and we'll hit stop. And it will ask, do you really want to stop the test? Yes, we do. And then that will stop the test chamber. The next option is program mode. So here, let's go to a uh, let's go to a new program. So here we'll click new. And this here is the standard editing mode, but I would recommend editing in table mode. It's more similar to Microsoft Excel, and it will be easier to read. So duration, let's say we want to start at ambient, so we'll do 23C, let's just say 0%. Uh, I'm going to leave all of these as is, just because, again, this is a demo controller. And then we want new step, so we click that. And let's say I want to stay for one hour. Uh, we could stay for seconds, minutes, days, or hours, but we'll just stick with hours. And we'll stay there. Next, I want to jump, so duration of zero time, to 85C, 85% relative humidity. And I want to stay there for, let's say, four hours. So I'll hit OK. 8585. Now I want to jump back down to ambient. So let's say here, uh, let's make it more interesting. Let's say I want to go to negative 40. So I will do 40 negative, and let's say 0%. Let's say I want to stay there for four hours. So here for four hours, and then after all that's done, I want to go to ambient again. So 23 and 0. And I want to stay there for, let's say, 4 hours to make sure everything's conditioned back to ambient. So here's our profile, and we can double check what this looks like by going to this chart button over here. So you can see temperature in pink, humidity in blue, temperature goes from ambient to 85 to minus 40 back to ambient and then humidity 0 for temperature only 85 0 for uncontrolled so that's one loop but maybe we want to do multiple loops so here we can select loop and I want to loop these 85 and minus 40 set points and I want to go through it three times so we get three transitions hot and cold so we'll hit done and then OK. And now you can see this loop bar appeared. So we're going to run through this three times. If we go back to the chart, 
you can see the loop areas. So now we'll do three sets of 85 and minus 40 for a more rigorous test. And we can say done here. So here in values, we want to change this. So we'll hit Edit Program. And then I'll say 85C minus 40C test, just as an example. We hit Done. And then if we hit Back, it actually tells us that this test is one day and five hours. So that's actually really helpful to know how long the test is going to be. So if we select this test again, and we hit Start, yes, the temperature limit is set because this is a demo controller. We can see now our runtime, our remaining time, steps, step remaining time, start and end time. So a lot of really useful information right off to the left hand side here. And again, we can let this run or we can just stop it manually to continue the tutorial. So in messages, if you have any warnings or alarms, they will be shown here and they can be acknowledged. Here's a report feature that shows what's been happening in the chamber and what the user was. Settings, starting at language, we have multiple languages you can pick from. Right here I'm using English for the tutorial, but we have many others. This USB recording can be start or stopped, so it can be plugged in directly to the web season. Here on our limit values, this is where you can set warnings and alarms. So if you have a product that might be damaged at a certain temperature, you could set a warning to notify that, oh, you're getting close to this temperature, and an alarm to say, turn the chamber off if it reaches this temperature to protect a valuable prototype or something. So we have three levels of users, admin, user high, user low. So here we can add users, edit users, or delete users, so different employees can access the test chamber. We also have different units. So here we've been using Celsius, but you can also use Fahrenheit or Kelvin. We have Kelvin per minute, Kelvin per hour, Fahrenheit per minute, Fahrenheit per hour. Kelvin per minute is the same as Celsius per minute. And then if your chamber uh, is using pressure readings, we can do Tor, PSI, Pascals. For basic configuration, you can say the chamber name, different items up at the top, and then some more features down at the bottom. So the warning tone, that's the audible alarm from the web season. You can say when it turns on and off. For the chamber lighting, you can say if it automatically switches off at a set period of time. Or we can say no, it does not automatically switch off, and only the light button, which is here up in the upper right, can turn the chamber on and off. But we'll set this back to 10 minutes. For your interface, you will need this information here to be able to put the web season and the chamber on the same network as the rest of your company devices so you can access it remotely, use some PADI and some other features. So date and time is pretty straightforward. You can just set this appropriately. For your power failure, we have a couple of different options. Here we can continue the test yes on. We can say always to say if you lost power and you gain power again, continue the test right where it was. Or because of possible quality issues or quality procedures, say only continue the test under following conditions. 
So if the maximum time off was less than or equal to 10 minutes, continue the test. Or if the test space deviated less than 5 Kelvin, continue the test. And this could be changed to maybe 1 Kelvin and 20 minutes or whatever the case may be. Or if you lose power for any reason, that might invalidate the test you are running due to your procedures. So you can just say, never continue the test, and you'll have to restart. But this gives you a little bit of flexibility. And then the last thing I'll cover here is the maintenance. So here we have maintenance requirements. This is similar to uh, a car where your X percentage is away to your next preventative maintenance. So keep an eye on this. And then we just have version, download, and licensing info about the software. So that's the basic tutorial here. And if you have any questions, please call or email Weiss Technique. We would be happy to help with anything you have. Thank you.